Well, how much bad stuff do you want to know about the business that we've also got into before all the good stuff? I yeah. think I think we need to hear it because it's, it's not all good stuff, right? Well, I think entrepreneurs, and again, they I, need to know I, it. it's hard to sometimes talk about yourself. But what franchise did we not get into? Uh, <laughs> I, I, think, oh. I, I think that's more of the question. So, welcome to the Small Business Safari, where I help guide you to avoid those traps pitfalls and dangers that lurk when navigating the wild world of small business ownership. I'll share those gold nuggets of information and invite guests to help accelerate your ascent to that mountaintop of success. It's a jungle out there and I want to help you traverse through the levels of owning your own business that can get you bogged down and distract you from hitting your own personal and professional goals. So strap in adventure team and let's take a ride through the safari and get you to the mountaintop. Alan, I feel like getting my hair cut today, baby, because we got to go somewhere. But you know what? What? I don't have any hairs to cut. So no. um, we have an incredible so, guest today. Why do so, we even have them here? Then? Well, because you know what I do? I do have a lot of shit I need to dump. And uh, I got to dump it somewhere. And so I dump it with these guys. So we got some incredible guests today. But before we got started, we had to talk a little bit about the G word. Golf. It's a four-letter word for a lot it of It is, it is. So here's the question I'm going to ask everybody before we even get started to introduce everybody. If you had the chance, would you rather golf with your wife in a couple's outing or with your buddies in a foursome? Alan, you go first. No, buddies in a foursome, 100%. Michael? He loves his wife. Buddy, We've already established. All day long. Okay, good man. He's honest. Oh, we can Michael, trust him. Michael, I was setting it up because you said oh, you no, no, was no, going to no. listen to this no, one. No, no, he no. Said, no, buddies all day long. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, Mark. My wife doesn't have clubs. Thank you. <laughs> That's so, the best answer. My, my I dad, could have said the same thing. My dad and mom retired to a golf course community down in Naples. Uh, my mother's never played. My dad plays. And uh, he finds out. He goes, he said, Chris, all of the couples golf together. I feel like the fifth wheel. I'm like, dad, you should be thankful uh, that it's going like that. I said, and you need to find the other single guys and just play golf <laughs> with them. That's what this is about. I'll see her after I get off the golf course. Because that's what it's for. Men's sport. That being said, the one time I ever played Pebble Beach, Troy and I got uh, paired up with two women. So I'm not playing Pebble Beach. And they probably whipped you. Kicked the yeah. ever-living shit out of them. Yeah. I mean, just... It were was they a, regulars there? No. Uh, they had played there twice before, but they're regular. But the funny story is, they're from Atlanta. We go all the way out there, and they're in the Druid Hills Golf Club here. And, uh, and they, I mean, they were phenomenal. Uh, you know, it wasn't like it was a competition, but... Kind you of know, ended up when you're getting your ass kicked. And, especially after that. You're like, oh, my God. I mean, everything was down the middle. Everything was close to the green or on the green, <laughs> hitting greens and regulation. I'm over there flying shit into the, into the ocean. There's a lot of <laughs> balls out there, my friends. All right, guys. We got to get going. If you're driving around, dial in because this is one you want to listen to. We're going to have a lot of fun this time. These guys even said we're right off the bat. Please don't give me an agenda. I'm like, oh, thank God. Because uh, if you've been listening to the podcast, you know we don't do agendas. We just fucking freewheel it. Don't we? Yeah, but we end up coming up with gold every time. Every time. So and, and, and there's a, a direct correlation with how full your glass of bourbon is, which is quite copious. Oh, yeah. we're going to go deep today because yeah. they're in studio. We're ready to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. And uh, truth be told, they were a touch late. So we decided to drink before they get started. Mm -hmm. So we're pre primed, ready to rock and roll. Let's introduce them, shall we? Let's. All right. We got the Mendoza brothers, Michael and Mark, out of Let's Nashville, go. Tennessee. Cheers, fellas. That's right. Cheers, Cheers boys. I want to give a shout out to Woodford. Uh, thank you for sponsoring this That's right. This uh, next 45 minutes to an hour. Sponsored by Woodford Reserve. We are ready to rock we and roll. We are also ready for that phone call if you do want to actually sponsor it. <laughs> See, I, this is a guy after my own heart every time, right? He's the Where is guy. the sponsor, right? Let's get it going. So these guys grew up in an entrepreneurial household, watch mom and dad struggle through it, probably uh, go through everything that we all go through, right? There's the ups, there's the downs. Maybe they shared this stuff with them. Maybe they didn't. We're going to find out. What kind of business were they in? Uh, we've been in the restaurant business, car business. Um, this is your folks. Marketing business for our folks growing up. Wow. Um, a little bit of corporate America, but not much. But yeah, we had a, a beautiful upgrading. I mean, nothing to complain about, but we learned, we learned the, we learned the ins and outs of mom and dad working hard. So that was, that was, what a great that was, example. That was helpful for us. That's sure. super cool. All right. So you guys grew up in that household and still decided to go into it. But you didn't go right into it, right? Because that would be like, let's get after work at 18. But no, we can't do that. So what would you guys do at 18? Went to and, college. No. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think it's a quick, uh, just a quick story about our life is, and once again, we'll just give a shout out to mom and dad real quick. But 
Mark and I shared a room till I was 18 years old. I got two years on him. Um, for 18 long years, I had a roommate. Uh, <laughs> and then I got to go to college for a little bit. And then one year after he left home, he became my roommate again. So we have yeah. not left our side. I tried, I tried a, a quick stint over at, uh, university of South Florida. Okay. And then, uh, my bro was down at uh, Arizona State, and I said, "You know what? That doesn't seem like a bad place to go." And so, if you've uh, ever not, been there? Yeah, it's not, not too long after to uh, <laughs> we became roommates again. That's right. Where'd you grow up? Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Okay. We got we got a family restaurant there that's been there for about forty years, yeah. and then uh, still there, still kicking. If anybody ever goes to Albuquerque, New Mexico, you got what's the name? Out. What's the name? Padilla's uh, New Mexican Kitchen. It's the Ideas, New Mexican Kitchen. It's the best in That's town. Right. Best still peas in town. Best red chili in town. Go get it. 40 plus years. There you go. Got a shout out for Padillas in Albuquerque. Go check it out, everybody. I'll I tell you know. what, the New, Me- New Mexican food most people don't know about is it's special. Yeah. It's it, really good. Judy it's and I were in the world. Yeah. Best in the world. It's what it's about. Judy and, I, Judy and I were in Santa Fe this uh, this last fall and we got some of the Chimayo chili powder oh, yeah, and brought yeah. it back. And I was like, real yeah and i still got the guy's card he doesn't have an email or anything i guess i have to call him to get some more i'll bring you some okay ah uh, there you go you got a hook hey, 188 up. episodes and all paid off finally yeah, finally yeah. ellen gets something <laughs> as opposed to having to bring chris bourbon and beer all right or yeah. you know somebody wants to buy or sell a building in atlanta but you know well so i'll take the you, chili powder hey well you building. know what the way these guys building. He, well he's he's a commercial <laughs> real estate agent he's ready to so if you guys are ready to buy he's ready to sell you got it. Let's we'll go. talk off. We'll talk off. Uh, off camera. Oh, Here. I like it. Oh, yeah. hey, see, I told you these guys are gonna be fun. All right, so let's talk about that. Uh, so that's uh, uh, Arizona State. What is that? That is Spears up. Sun Devils. Up? Uh, 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 yeah, Forks, forks up. up. Yeah, Tempe, Arizona. Good yeah. spot. Nice. All right, so you guys do that. You go off to college, but the whole time you're still thinking, when I come out of business, I can't wait to go to corporate America, sit in a cubicle, and work for the man for the rest of my life. All right. Well, well uh, I'll just say, Mike was uh, working at a restaurant there in town, and you know, when I got there, I needed a job too. So, you know, the restaurant was hiring. So you went to work at the same so restaurant as your brother? So we just jumped in uh, to the same restaurant and, <laughs> and started working there, bartending, serving, and uh yeah, rent, you know, just we met a uh, we met thing. our we met our eventual partner. I was I don't know, twenty three years old, twenty two years old, and uh, going to going to school full time and and trying to make ends meet to enjoy the Scottsdale nightlife. But uh, yeah, we which there's a fair amount to enjoy. You got to you gotta work Friday and Saturday. We night. started this sure. restaurant. We had about to get to the second part of the yeah, night. Yeah, we had about eleven hundred square foot of a pizzeria restaurant. And uh, I think we opened it in 2002 and uh, grew this space out, built out probably another 500 square feet out for, for seating to continue growing and then build out the patio. In the Arizona area. In, in Scottsdale. In Scottsdale, yeah. Scottsdale Arizona. And right. then, uh, so you, you actually purchased, uh, it started a restaurant while you're in school. Correct. Yeah, we were, huh? yeah, we, we were, we partnered with an Italian, uh, Italian family um, from New Jersey and, Sure enough, uh, <laughs> that's it, Uncle Tony. I don't know about the yeah, the, the, his, name the, was Vinny. his name was Vinny. <laughs> Vinny, <laughs> yeah, uh, Vinny, yep. but, uh, but yeah, and uh, we all went through it. But 2007, we're like, man, this restaurant's killing it. We need a bigger space, we need a bigger space. And in the same, in the same, I guess, mall area, uh, a 4,000 square foot spot opened up that used to be a David's Bridal underneath Ruth Chris, underneath Ruth Chris Steakhouse. Shout out to Ruth Chris. They, fed us a lot of great food but um opened up uh the space opened up we're like yeah 2007 we're killing it this this restaurant's growing we have, we have no more space we have no more room well everyone knows what happens after 2007 yeah and uh we got into a uh 10-year lease oh, on phoenix the phoenix market got so built, water built out a uh, beautiful um 3500 square foot restaurant open kitchen concept kind of the first in the area and we were excited and then boom, it happened. But you know what? Local talent wins out in those moments. And we had a awesome clientele, um, a great staff, and we crushed it. We 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 did it. We we made it through the 
Wow. Made it through the system. Mark bartended. If anybody was in Scottsdale from 2008 to 2011, <laughs> you got heavy drinks on Thursday, <laughs> Friday, and <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> and what was the name of this restaurant? It was called the Cove Trattoria. The who what? The Cove Trattoria. Oh, yeah. It's still going? No. No, we uh, we sold it. Um, I got out, and we'll get into that later, I'm sure. But we got out in uh, ended up getting out in 2013 and, and moved to Nashville. But, um, why yeah, Nashville? Was... Well, wait a minute. Let's back up. Come back. We got. We I got. Know... We got a lot to cover before that. Well, yeah, we got. You no, know, I, I got an idea. All right. Should we let the listeners in on where they're at now, and then go back and back? There we go. go. All right. Because before they're like, okay, these two who guys who you know, bounce around, blah yeah. blah blah. All right. So today, where do you guys live, and what businesses do you own? Notice I said businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, we both live in Nashville, Tennessee, close to downtown. We currently, uh, I'll let Mark talk about um, one of them, but we we opened up a dumpster roll-off company two years ago called Vavia, V-A-V-I-A. Um, excited about it. Love the industry, but there's a reason why we got into it that I'll let Mark kind of get into, but we also are part of another franchise, which is... Do you have what it takes to start your own business? Are you tired of the nine to five corporate job and ready to make that leap into entrepreneurship? You need to check out From the Zoo to the Wild, the book by successful entrepreneur, Chris Lalomia. This book is a unique perspective on the journey into the wild world of home services and delivering excellence in service while working in customers' homes. Lalomia shares his path to success in this industry including proven customer relationship strategies, award-winning customer experience processes, and a unique approach to training a team of service technicians to perform at the highest levels. Whether you're a small business trying to scale or a franchise operation, From the Zoo to the Wild will give you the mindset, habits, leadership style, and customer-oriented processes to succeed as a small business owner in the world of home services. So if you're ready to take control of your future, get a copy of From the Zoo to the Wild today, available on Amazon. Yeah, we started, uh, well, I I moved to Nashville, I think around 2008-ish with the opportunity with Sport Clips Haircut. So, um, I don't know if we'll go back or forth, but, um, yeah, I was working for the, uh, the corporate office at the time and was lucky enough to be able to find opportunity in, uh, in Nashville. So God, they're modest. How many of those freaking things? Did so you we've got, uh, it was three at the time. Yeah. Um, it's gone north of 50 and, and, uh, you know, through acquisition and building and selling, we, 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 uh, we've got 50 now, um, that we own and operate, uh, throughout the Southeast. So yeah, we're, we're happy. And, um, yeah, there's, uh, I think we'll get into it, but there's uh, a lot that we've learned through the, through the, uh, through the years for sure. Right? Okay. So 50 plus and growing sports clips franchise and, and how, Bavia. How many Bavia? Bavia. So we, uh, we own, uh, Atlanta. And that's, I, I, what do they call that one or a couple franchises? So we, uh, it's, we, we're the franchisees for this area. Currently we okay. own, um, you're the area developer. Right? We own six territories here in Atlanta. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, there's obviously more available, but, I mean, there's yeah we own uh, we own the majority of of Atlanta. Yeah, okay. we've got six territories here in town, and and eventually we'll uh, we'll see if we can get down to where we really like. But we also own territories in Mobile and Pensacola, so we love uh, we love it down south. All right, so now we can go back two knuckleheads right. with freaking well, Uncle Vinny yeah. and well, let's <laughs> plus, again, anybody listening, uh, but via a, a great platform and program. What that is is. Roll off dumpsters go into the residential sites, uh, and they work with all different sizes. And I was I was telling Alan, this is how I came across these guys, is because as a remodeler, you know, you can go with the big dogs, your waste management's of the world, your Uncle Vinny's. 
Um, or you can go with guys who can work with you and can work with your size and what you're doing on weeks. Um, but also take care of your customer just like you would. Um, so that's what we've liked working with these guys. So there's a great niche market, but it all, they also work with residential customers just looking to dump stuff out of their homes as well. But it's like a white glove dump. Uh, definitely a white glove dump. So they come in, uh, they put down the plywood, they put the dumpster down. Uh, when they pull it away, they make sure there's no uh, crap sitting on the driveway. There's no nails sitting on the driveway. Never had a complaint with the Bavia uh, pull from all of the ones we've used. So it's been great for us. But that's just a testament to the the idea and the franchise and the, obviously the business they run. So now we can go back. Yes. Because Vavia needs to actually uh, jump in and sponsor this podcast as well. <laughs> along with Woodford. I do agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get with the franchise or. No, I like it. Let's do it. All right. Let's get back to this. So, um, Mark, you said something that I didn't realize. Uh, so you left the entrepreneurial world. You were sitting uh, doing restaurants and you said, no, I'm going to go to Sports Clips Corporate. Did you have an eye on getting into the franchising business or was this like... Hey, listen, bro, love you, but I'm going to Nashville and I got to do this thing. Well, I needed a job. And I'll chime in on this. I, after I, he's I done. had a I'll good tell job. the real story after he's done. Nice. Let's, <laughs> but, uh, Let's hear Mark's story. No, I think you have one uh, go in a quiet yeah, room think, and come uh, back out. You know, we had a good thing going, but at the end of the day, you know, I think you, you know, go through school and you have a great life and, you know, stuff's happening and, you know, you want to put that degree to work. And uh, I have, been very very fortunate to have uh good people in my life but you know i had a marketing degree so where was that going to take me and uh so lucky enough to 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 fall into a really really good company and um you know through that time you know kind of learn more of a model but at, at the end of the day I, you know michael and i are we're operators and so we probably knew that long term wasn't going to be you know, that nine to five, uh, at the time I was helping the grand opening process and probably opened about 300, 400 franchise stores and, uh, you know, kind of got that opportunity to find that there was, you know, some stores available in Nashville, uh, things had worked out and we probably knew at the end of the day that we probably would be entrepreneurs at some point. Uh, when was that point going to happen? I didn't think it was going to happen at 24. Um, but I think when, when, uh, when that opportunity happens, I think you have to take it. So you went to, you went to, they're out of Nashville is where sports clips is. Well, they're out of Austin. Uh, yeah. they're out of Georgetown, Texas, actually just, uh, North of Austin. And, uh, I was still lucky enough to be living out of Phoenix while I was doing that job. Uh, and you were I, there you were on a marketing capacity yeah i was flying out every monday uh we would be doing you know a grand opening on that friday or saturday uh but flying out going business to business letting people know that we were going to open and and really trying to build that brand awareness in that market um and then lucky enough to be able to hand off the relationships that we had built on the corporate side to the franchisee so that that franchisee had a chance wow that's so, amazing franchise support, to be yeah. honest with you. I'm super impressed. Right. So uh, everybody who's you've been listening, you don't know this. I'm going to refresh everybody's memory. Uh, Alan not only uh, left Enterprise uh, to start his own and bought into a franchise, he then went and went to work for a franchisor. So he knows the good, the bad, and the ugly. And it sounds like Sports Clips does it right because setting somebody up for success, doing what you just said, canvassing the network and doing the doing the cold call, doing the pulls. Yeah, having that corporate support right up front as opposed to a lot of franchises that sell it and hope it sticks and then they backfill the support. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, that sounds yeah. kind of like Chick-fil-A level. Well, what I think what happens, you know, and 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 as a franchisee, you know, you, you're focused on that grand opening. You're focused on that 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 start. Mm -hmm. Right? But what's going to get you there? You know, you you need those clients to walk through that door that first day. And same thing in the dumpster business, you know, before we launched in April, uh, you know, we were canvassing, you know, since January and really kind of getting our name out there and starting to talk to people. But you did so that, that on your own, not by video. True. Correct. Right. But Correct. sports clips. So you went off because uh, we're going to give it to you in a minute, Michael. But uh, so you went off, went to sports clips. Why Nashville again? I, that's, I didn't. So we ended up having an opportunity to buy stores there. Um, work, I was working out of Phoenix, obviously the, the, the company's out of Georgetown, Texas. Um, but it didn't matter where I lived cause I was going to, 
Oregon. I was going to North Carolina. I was going to Nashville. I was going to wherever the new store was opening. And so I would help that first week. Um, but really I was just going to the next place. Um, it didn't matter where it was. So, so that's where you said, Hey, I got a chance. I got to uh, go look at some stores in Nashville. That's correct. So move yourself up there, kind of looked at the area, had to acquaint yourself with the area, right? You probably didn't even know it. We didn't know the area. Um, at the time it didn't really matter. Again, the same thing. You travel, you travel, you travel. Uh, Nashville is a great market. It's not what Nashville is today. That's for sure. Uh, but had the opportunity to, Wait, to well, you say stores. that, but, but for everybody, what, what, what does that mean? Because there I think was, a lot of people don't realize the, how big it's There become. wasn't the cranes. There wasn't the travel. There wasn't the tourism. Uh, Franklin, Tennessee has now made a name for itself, but that's where we bought uh, the first two stores uh, with one extra in Nashville. Yeah, I think a lot of people, that's why uh, when you guys said Nashville, I'm like, huh. Uh, because And the reason I went, huh, is I'm finding so many people are finding either I'm going to retire there or that's where I want to live because they like the climate. They like the temperament. Um, obviously it's got a great vibe with the country music scene and even, and what a lot of people don't realize it's not just country music. There's all kinds of music there. It's just a live place to be in a great place and to be. Vanderbilt. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. In this little school there. Yeah. yeah. But, well, you, you got two good schools you, you've there. got, you've got Belmont you know, that's making a name for itself. Yeah. You've got, uh, Vandy right there and yeah, coming off the CMAs, Nashville looks a lot bigger than it is. <laughs> Yeah. So, so you, that's uh, exactly what I was going to say is that's why a lot of people are moving there. It's got that small town feel, but you still have the big town. Of, but everybody goes to Franklin, which is funny to me. Right. So uh, long story short, back in uh, late 1999, I built a call center up in there yeah, for a Ford Motor Credit. Wow. So I got to stay in Nashville and leaving from Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte's a banking town, Nashville, the music town. You can imagine the nightlife difference oh, between yeah. those two towns. And you're like, man, this city is alive. It was so cool. And this is the 90s. I mean, dude, this we're going on almost 30 years now. Yeah. We're paying some Ford motor, motor credit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ford, Thank you for that. Thank yes. You. Well, we're, we're paying some of that, too. So I like that. Yeah. So, no, uh, all right. So you moved to Nashville. That's why I wondered if it was just the temperate you wanted to get out of the, the Albuquerque heat. But no, these guys still, you could totally love it. But Nashville was the opportunity. So you go up there, you start it, but somehow you had to suck Michael out of there. But I want to hear, you got it going before he came up? Well, how much bad stuff do you want to know about the business that we've also got into before all the good stuff? I yeah. think I think we need to hear it. because it's, it's not all good stuff, right? Well, I think entrepreneurs, and again, they need I, to know I, it. it's hard to sometimes talk about yourself, but what franchise did we not get into? Uh, <laughs> I, I, think, oh. I, I think that's more of the question, so... Um, Petro's Chili and Chips, great franchise. Um, we didn't. Uh, so you we bought didn't make it through. Yeah, it's great. Chili's and Chips, Frito Pie concept. I mean, come on, who doesn't like that? It was my worst Thanksgiving every single every <laughs> single year by far. Well, we were in the mall, and you know, one of the things that we had to do is, <laughs> you know, when Mike came down, we had to go to work, right? Oh no! You guys worked in a mall inside, oh, yeah. uh, inside of our beautiful food court in uh, Rivergate in Hendersonville. Almost, I guess not Hendersonville. Rivergate, Rivergate, uh, Hendersonville. There is a uh, carousel, a, um, a circus, full of screaming kids. A circus. It wasn't this kids. It was the music that happened every I don't know two and a half minutes. That our our um, beautiful mall kiosk, not kiosk, but mall. Unit, mall restaurant a mall restaurant stood in front of and so every i'd come in on thanksgiving to, to visit family and stuff and yeah my shift started early wednesday morning and it didn't end till oh so wait a minute so oh, you, yeah black friday vis- huh your visit to come family for a vacation was working oh yeah that sounds yeah. familiar yeah. yeah welcome to be an entrepreneur yeah. back, my friends and back then i was uh, on chili i was on the yeah. chili i had the call i had the, I had the cauldron but, like huge cauldron and i was i was i got mom chili assured i got brother assured i got everybody assured my brother-in-law we got everybody was working and you, after and you told and you told everybody you're like guys it's black say, friday this is and this is the best day ever yeah it's black friday oh, it's it's gonna, we're gonna and we sold, D- don't ever go to nashville because they're gonna put you to work i know that's what i'm thinking now as i was gonna go up there and visit i thought we'd be playing some golf next <laughs> thing i know he's gonna be like hey hey can you cut hair yeah. like, we'll go down, all, down look at me <laughs> we'll yeah that's how they lure you in and we won't, yeah. we won't first get... you got a stint on the chili bucket but yeah, yeah. The chili bucket. all right hey can you cut hair no yeah uh those guys are great 
Uh, they're doing a great job up in East uh, Tennessee, uh, based out of Knoxville. They do some good stuff. We just weren't, um, we just weren't the right fit. Um, why don't you think fantastic? I mean, it's a great concept. So why don't you think you're a great fit? Because this is a good learning lesson for all of us. I, I think that you know, for us, we've always looked into franchising. Uh, you know, they were probably pretty young at the time, and it's just trying to figure out where's the right space. Uh, is it freestanding? Is it you know? Is it a mall concept? you know, where does it kind of take place? Um, so after that, we've, uh, we dip and dabbled in Gigi's cupcakes, which was a fantastic model, mm -hmm. uh, based out of Nashville as well. You did buy Gigi's cupcakes. We did, I yeah. can't wait to hear this one because was, uh, I, I was sitting there. I poo pooed you all day long. Yeah. Every time I looked at it, my son worked at, at the Gigi's here. Oh, really? There you go. Yeah. Every time when I saw it, I was like, this thing is never going to work. It's but totally, you kept effective. eating them, didn't you? Yes. Well, look at me. Of yeah. course I did. <laughs> So I guess that's, uh, you, you know, we're trying to figure out how did we get to Nashville? Um, I wasn't going to do Gigi's cupcakes. So I needed, a I needed to phone a friend that knew a little bit about food and, uh, that's where Mike came in. So yeah, we, uh, kind of bought the concept before letting him know that he was going to be moving to Nashville. Yeah. It was a interesting call. I think before that, <laughs> before that, you know, the rest, our, our restaurant in, in Phoenix was, was doing well. I mean, we were surviving and we were getting to that next level, but, uh, Mark's being modest. He, uh, I think in 2012 or 13 is when our journey really started, uh, getting back together. Uh, they bought 18 stores in a day for sport clips. And I remember that phone call and he was just like, man, I like what next? Like, Oh my God, we had, we had five four, three or four stores. And then he's like, now we have 22 stores. Oh my God. What's next? So much day, for small growth in and one so day. He's like, he's like, you need to figure your side out. You know, obviously, you know, we trust each other and we'll get into that later. But you know, he's like, all right, well, let's just rolling. Let's 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 get this rolling. Let, my exit strategy is now okay. You know, I want to be partners with my brother, and this is what we've done our whole life. So let's just let's just get this thing moving. And then I don't know. A week later, he's like, hey, by the way, I think I think we just bought a cupcake franchise. <laughs> well, huh? <laughs> get after, right after buying the 18th. Yeah, sports, but... we're like, okay, all let's right, do that. Hey, let's keep rolling. And so we had we had stores in Knoxville, Nashville. Uh, we had a food truck, which was a disaster. Nobody getting, uh, thank God for the food truck people, but it's a tough business. Um, but our, our then plan at that point was, all right, how can we make this thing work? And we bought a store in South Lake, Texas, just a suburb out of Dallas, which is a pretty nice spot in town. I actually, I know it. Yeah, I know. It's a great area. And to Chris's point, you know, could this thing work? A hundred percent. It could have, it could have, we had the number one store in the country. We we're doing about $20,000 a week in cupcakes and GG cupcakes in yeah. South Lake, Texas. Yes. And, uh, I, and I did, I'm telling you guys, I was the biggest, if you would have said, Hey, Chris, if it we was, knew each other, it was, I'm doing GG's cupcake. I'm like, it was an such amazing, a fad, gonna get so epic. it was so fatty, but it was fat T and fatty. Right. It was, uh, <laughs> a good concept is just, man, it was a lot of cupcakes and a lot of, uh, well, 5 a.m. I mean, it was a little bit, um, hard to manage. My like, guy, I was, was making eight hundred cupcakes was, a day. My guy was there. whipping out some cupcakes. Yeah, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Mike, you were you were you were the cupcake maker. Yeah. Well, who do, who else do you think was going to move to Dallas? Uh, yeah. Wait, wait a minute. So you mean as an Person entrepreneur, chili? No, it's cupcakes. <laughs> so, I, I, I wish I could show you guys pictures. This is the old saying: thing. "Fool me yeah. once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me." We're not going to stay. We're not. We're not going to furnish the apartment. But you know, he's going. Somebody's going to have to live there. Oh my God, that's awesome! Yeah, we had a nice. See, everything entrepreneurship, a... right? Especially in today's world, you know. If I'm an influencer, I just take a couple pictures. I'm gonna have millions of dollars. Um, how about slinging chili in a mall with the carousel going? Doo, 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 and then, hey, uh, I got another idea. Why don't you start making cupcakes at five a.m. in the morning? With about is, four and a half inches of the yeah, frosting. And this is all whilst still trying to run the main company that's making the money. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, I think and I think the cool thing about you know this accelerated journey that we went through together is you know uh, Mark's first story about Sport Clips being hired by you know going and kind of doing that corporate life a little bit. I think he learned so much that benefited 
you know, our next 15, 20 years, and now it's going to benefit, you know, our next 30 years. I mean, I think that hard work that he did going into every single city, every single market, um, really, truly being being the person that helped that franchise, that new franchise owner to feel comfortable by, you know, obviously buying the license, buying the franchise, spending a lot of his hard-earned money to, you know, build a new business, be an entrepreneur, which most franchisees aren't. Right. Um, I think what he learned in that space to to teach to teach these guys how to market their business, number one. I mean, that's it is that's what it is. I mean, market yourself, market your business, and people will come, right? But without without him being in those markets and, and opening those stores, I don't know where I mean, he wasn't the only one, but they had a great team that was out there doing that. And I think we learned a lot because every single business we've owned since then, that's our footprint. All right, we, back we, to Gigi's though. Footprint. I want to hear. So, how long did it last before you had to give it up? We or- sold in uh, 2017. Um, the company was actually uh, bought, and um, the being, pre- at, being out of Nashville, deal. they were yeah. born. They were yeah. they were they were born out of Nashville, um, but the company was out of Fort Worth. So, with them buying uh, the company, the best thing for them would be to have a flagship store, a training store we were in south lake so you made you did pretty good with that one it was you? fine all right <laughs> I, clear, cl- clearly uh <laughs> all right i want to but i got to go back to this one so i got five stores and here i am i've been burning slogging killing it yeah duh, 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 get my ass kicked for 16 years and you bought 18 stores in one day how the hell did you do that we bought three of the next three months yeah so Tell me how so this 20, 21, 21 stores and about like an, uh, I mean, we're addicted. strapped on some stones here. Yeah, an addiction. Boy. 21 stores and about it was in about six months. And I think, you know, that was the, the, the biggest kind of transition of work. And when you're, you know, you're trying to find out what you're going to do. And, you know, for us, we thought probably 10 stores would be a good, would be a good way to live. Um, and you don't, you know, you could pretty much run that. You can have some. Obviously, we 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 are thankful for, you know, our store managers and our area managers because at the end of the day, they're the ones that are that are the ones working. Um, but when you're looking to scale and we're looking to grow, you know, you take on, you know, that what's that next step? Um, and you can kind of sit in that 10, 12, 15 store area. Um, but yeah, when you get that next opportunity to say, okay, I've got, you know, opportunity to, to grow 21 stores in six months, you know, do you think you can do it? So what were the challenges? What tell, talk to us about the thought process for, so for a lot of us, you obviously did acquisition growth strategy. So obviously number one, there's financials. Number two, there's operational number three, there's leadership and support. So talk to us about how you went through all that. Well, I think the first part is, is that we know the business. We know the business model. Um, Two different sides of what we do now versus what we've done kind of in our past is that it's people dependent. And we knew that if we could get in front of our managers and our staff, that we, we, we could be successful. Um, And I, and I think that's the biggest thing is that, if you can get that trust and if you can build that trust and if you can kind of put that path in front, then you will get people that follow and uh, building culture, having fun, you know, doing the right things as far as culture and bringing in food and, you know, just doing that small stuff means so much to any individual that that's kind of the, the recipe is that if you can have, really good people and that's no different than today and in, in, in any business and i think we I, I think we probably know that more now than 10 years ago it's about how you treat people it's about the things the small things do matter um and i and i think when they when they see that i think you know at the end of the day they're they're, they're more than willing to go open up a store at 9 a.m and close whenever they close right or 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 take that extra client when they come in just before closing time Culture is a, a huge thing to me, and it's a very top-down thing. And you guys obviously are are awesome. I can tell already. But 
you've got 50 stores, you know, there's a, the old, you crack the whip. You don't know if it snaps at the other end. I mean, how do you, how do you implement this culture across that kind of a scale? You hire people. Yeah. And I think, I think the one thing we've been blessed with is the first person Mark ever, I mean, was associated with the sparkles business. She's still with us today. Mm. And so when, when the whip is whipped, <laughs> we know it's getting whipped because she's the leader. She's, she's the person that, that we, we follow. I mean, she's, she's our culture. All right. Give us one little secret. One little, little things matter. You said it. And I love how you said that Mark was little things matter. Give us one little thing that you would tell people if you did this, it might make an impact. I don't know. I just got a text message this morning with somebody saying, thank you. Uh, I, I think it's just, it's those thanks. And, and, and at the, at, Every single time you walk out of a store or, you know, if it's the dumpster business or whatever it may be, I think you just tell people, thank you. Like, you know, thank you for doing that. Or, you know, why we still go get haircuts. I mean, now our kids go get haircuts and, you know, whatever it may be. But when you walk out that door, you say, thank you. Every single time, I think it's the appreciation. Uh, it's got to be genuine. Though. We've done a, not a we're, we're not as good as you guys. We don't do a pod, but. We do a, uh, you know, we've had a, a running conference call for 15 years and it's every Tuesday at 7 a.m. It's never changed. And we have every single one of our managers and our, in our area managers and our leaders on that team uh, or, or on that call. And, you know, again, it's something that you don't take for granted. It's the thanks. It's the celebrations. It's why are we here? And, and I think it's always making sure that you're saying that not just that, Oh, they, they, they know that, you know, we're thankful for them. No, you have, you have to actually say it. Well, and the other thing that they're doing by scaling so quickly is now you can offer a career path where you can Absolutely. be super appreciative. And if you've got your two stores, it is what it is. You, you know, you, all your people sort of cap out, but when you've got 50 stores, you've got a career path. Well, we said, uh, the first person I ever met. Um, she came kind of as part of the package. She was, she came with, the the, the guy that, uh, that we bought the company from and, uh, that was in Nashville. Uh, she was traveling all over, um, middle Tennessee. She's still with us today. She's a season ticket holder of, uh, here in Atlanta. For the Hawks. Uh, for the, the Hawks. Hawks. She's a big Hawks fan. Oh, Look and uh, you know what? now you know she's definitely a trooper. Yeah. Yeah. She is a loyal person. Yeah, you can trust very her. Loyal, very loyal. Very loyal. Guys. Oh. And you know who else is a manager of ours? Her daughter. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. There you go. I, obviously, she likes working with you guys because yeah. there's a vibe. Like, so, one of the things that I picked up, and if you guys didn't, and I'm a big fan of this one, and that's that that cadence of getting together. So, we do uh, training every other Wednesday in my company. But my sales team and my project managers get together every Wednesday and we're there and we're in person and we're making it happen. And you're right. It's those little things, but that's that little things of cadence that build that culture and that culture permeates down because back to the fact that you guys have 50 plus stores and in 50 plus stores, you have at least what, five, 10, I don't know how many uh, stylists you have. We have about 400 stylists underneath our belt. Right. right now. And you will not touch all of them. You guys will not know all of them. You won't even know their names. You don't know their names. They don't know your names. And so you've got to find a way to get your culture and your thought process down to them. And it's happening that way. And that's, again, when you scale and you take those that, I, I want to go back to this again. You went to 18 in one fucking day. I mean, the stones there, bro, is big. It was it SBA lending? Was it money? Was it family? Was it hey, uh, Michael, don't ever spend another dollar again because I'm using all your savings. I think that the learning curve and all of that was learning how the world works. You know, whether it's bank funding, private funding, all that kind of stuff. I think that was a huge learning curve that we all lived and learned, and it was a little bit of everything. I mean, you you do what you have to do to make the deal work, and I think. Uh, that's what we did. I, and I think, I think most people would be shocked that like, sometimes you got to keep your own job while you go into maybe a, your, you know, if you're trying to start your own business or something like that, a lot of times you have to keep getting paid by who you're getting paid by. Um, but I think a lot of people would be shocked that there's a lot of individuals that will carry that note. And if you don't ask, you don't know. And if this you don't is ask, the answer is no. 
again, so owner financing, uh, getting creative with the deals. Like again, that's the stuff that we just never heard about before the internet. And you didn't know the stuff was going on. People didn't share this with you unless you had a great mentor who would say, you know, you wouldn't know until you ask. But a lot of guys might say, hey, you know what? Pay me out over the next five years or 10 years. Uh, you don't know. And you, because you're always like, oh my God, I got to come up with a million bucks to buy this machine shop. Or you don't uh, have the, don't. or you don't have but the experience to you go to the bank. To. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of folks out there that, want to see people succeed mm -hmm. yeah i think that's the part where you, if you get really myopic and down on it because it's easy to get in your own head and go oh my god i gotta come up with all this money myself and uh nobody else can do it but me uh, perhaps i'm the only one at the table like that but uh that's how i did it because i didn't launch i didn't want a partner i didn't want a brother uh, i love how tight tough tight you guys are <laughs> He is. I got a brother. He's five years younger than me. He's wildly more successful. By you know, the way. I was going to listen. To I was going to ask because he doesn't even follow the entrepreneurship model. But I, don't worry, I'm getting this kid sucked in. I was going to ask about partnerships because our listeners know Chris does not play well with others. He does not. He just sort of tolerates me in his space right here. Partnerships are hard, and it's a it's a thing that we've talked about over the years that we've done this podcast. And what's even harder is a family partnership. So how do you guys make this work? And what are your separations of duties? And how, yeah, how think, do you not step on each other's toes? I think that's a great question. I think everybody that we've ever met asks us the exact same question. Like, how does this, how do you guys even coexist? And the easy answer is we don't know another way. But the best, I think the best way is trust. I think any partnership, whether it's family outside whatever is trust there's no one yeah i can trust more than my brother but on top of that we don't think anything alike and so i think what keeps us on our toes every single day is we have problems we have highs we have lows we have situations that that need attention on every level whether it's finance operations anything and we will not give the same answer so what's the deciding vote meet in the middle usually and but there's 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 just ways that it works and i i can't there's not a secret recipe but you know i'm 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 more more inclined to to speak on like maybe on like an employer employee kind of operations level mm -hmm. and he kind of sees a, a long-term vision quicker than i do and i think that is so so he's strategic helpful, or tactical probably okay yeah but i think that's helpful in our in our individual partnership i think that's just helpful because there's always going to be a there's always going to be an answer out there but we just have to get to it and, and and it'll take it'll take a couple days maybe but more importantly like you know we just drove here from nashville we didn't say one word to each other for almost five <laughs> oh, that, hours that's what i was gonna say it's almost <laughs> like probably with the two of you guys saying hold it for the pod yeah. right yeah. right yeah and so yeah, we'll go five hours in a car and not talk to each other, right? And so it's just like it'd be totally hey, cool with it. And yeah, it'd be fine. fine. We're just we're just and same thing. You know, listen to podcasts. We're doing everything that we need to do. We're yeah. answering phone calls. We'll, but we'll go out to dinner. I'm not talking. I'm talking to the guy next to me, not next to me, but the guy next to me, right? And it's like, you know, we don't. It, it's kind of that same way. It's and you don't, it, you don't, you don't get this. Oh my god, he's not talking to it's me. It's hold it for the know. pod. It's kind of like it, it's kind of that mentality of a. Uh, Hold you know, we get, we get I home and we'll get questions at home. They're like, you didn't talk to Mike? I'm like, no. What do you know? Because you might know more than I do. Or somebody that works for us may know more than, than I know because I just haven't talked to him. Yeah, I've been with them. But it doesn't mean I've been talking so, to them. So do you then work together on everything? You don't have any separation of duties? And then you just sort of tackle all the problems together? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of weird how That's it works. That's interesting. But it, it's weird how it works. I mean, you know. What are you going to do if somebody goes on vacation? Yeah, we need to have all the answers. No, I think. Well, I think but normally it, I think it's it like you. Like, have, we, we had you a, know, He's got his marketing. And I won't. I mean, I don't want to. I mean, if she's listening, great. But like we had a, a salary conversation yesterday with one of our long term employees. And we're like, what do we what do we need to do? And I kind of I kind of gave my two piece like my quick little two minute conversation. And then he listened and then he kind of gave his, and then we're like, all right, well, how do we get to there? 
and we got there like almost the exact same number without actually saying the number. And it was weird just because I said what she was doing and, and the amount of work and stuff like this. And he said, well, this is how this looks, you know, you know, long-term. And if we can get there by the end of the year, what, what does that number look like? And it was the same number. It was kind of weird how it ends up, but. Yeah. I think what you guys have is obviously very special and I don't think can be duplicated um, or replicated. Um, you but know, maybe it should. Well, maybe, uh, but they need to write the book on it because this is going to be interesting. Because I watched. Have you written a book? We are our. Um, we should. <laughs> I mean, it, you probably should. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you how it works, <laughs> right, Alan? Oh, uh, I would. I wouldn't know, yeah, Chris. Oh, that's but, right. Mentorship's not great. Yeah, and yeah. and you know, look, the the and entrepreneurship is not for everybody, obviously. But I think the lows are extremely, extremely low, and they happen way more often than the highs. But then when you get that high, it's just like this is this is why we do it. And we and we go we love each other. Do we fight? Of course, but then thirty minutes later we're fine. But yeah, I think he, that's the big part too. Uh again, back to every great partnership. We've had a couple of great partners come yeah. on. Um, they do a great job of segregating duties, is what we've heard before. Right. That's um, no, that's what I normally hear. They, that's why this is they unique. agree to disagree and then hash it out, but both agree that um, I think I'm, th I'm thinking about the Outback deck guys, uh, first and then, mm -hmm. um, uh, it doesn't matter. So, but they, they, they go, Hey, look, all right. Decision made, uh, get over it. Don't get butt hurt. You got to move because the, the, at the end of the day, the problem is way outside of these four walls and we got to go attack that. And I think to answer your question again, it took us a while to learn how to delegate or all control freaks. If you own your own business, you're a, you're a psychopath. I mean, period. You have to be. I mean, I'm, I'm in, a, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be in a lot of meetings now with Chris. I identify with that. Um, <laughs> I was given, there is not a, uh, usually in our meetings, he has an opinion on almost every topic. I kind of try to stay quiet, but, uh, no, you have to be, you have to be that person, but it took us a long time to learn how to delegate tasks, you know, at the high level, you can, you, we can kind of talk it out, but putting the right people in the right places to kind of take that this not necessarily decision making off our off our hands, but people that are gonna make the right decision faster, I think is is crucial. I mean, I think right. delegating tasks on a daily basis for any sort of whatever level I, I think that we would be is. blind to not share that we have always, always, always hired before we need that person. Always. I love that. Love yeah, that again. A Stay lot of, half a person ahead. Was, yeah, yeah. Which, which, which I two or, two or three probably. But well, yeah, right. your scale. Yeah, I've done it a couple times. Uh, I've done it. He's right, a hundred percent. Because you grow into it. You do, and you know what? Uh, I just got done telling my guy in Athens, um, hire the next two texts right now. He goes, but I only need one. I'm like, hire the next two, and I guess what? You'll probably find a way to fill. I it. talked to him on Tuesday, by the way. Yeah, yeah. You know, nice. Maybe he moved me to Athens. I was like, all right, cool. All right. <laughs> Good. That's funny. So Michael brings up that he was, uh, he said, I've been with me in meetings and I just had somebody else say that they're like, Hey, Chris, you're always good for an opinion. I need your question. I need your answer. So I got a call uh, because we're all in the uh, National Association of the Remodeling Industry. Shout out, Nary. Let's go. Um, so it's been a great group for me, you know, getting involved nationally now, which has been fun. Uh, I learn a lot more about my business as I'm giving uh, into it, but. Um, but that comment came back now twice in the same week. Uh -oh. I'm like, okay, good. So now I know exactly. Um, I'm not mysterious. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely not holding any cards back. Nah. And this is Did why you I think you were. Why this is why in corporate America I had to go to the uh, shrink twice. Yeah, <laughs> I literally had to go to couch at the corporate America office where well, they went, Chris, you're not like everybody else. I'm like, really? What the fuck does that mean? Yeah, that's like, why I'm exactly, here right now. Why you just exactly. said that? <laughs> All right, so back to you guys. So you're growing, you're doing your thing. I mean, we're in the middle of this. What's next? I mean, wh where do you guys see this going? Do you guys have a ten year plan? Do you guys see as, as it comes? You're just kind of catching it like a salmon in the river, or are you guys? Well, I think I think um... how many salmon have you caught? Zero. I love salmon, but I'll eat it though. Good. You catch it, I'll eat it. Because I'm not remember, I'm out. Good. I'm outside. I'm not outdoorsy. Yeah, I know. You would let somebody like, else I'm got it and cook it for you. Type of guy. Right. Yeah. In fact, no, I got but... poison ivy uh, playing golf the other day because I went looking for a golf ball, and I, it, just, it just wrecked that was me. A bad shot. That was your and, first uh, problem. You were looking for your golf. Ball. Well, <laughs> right, so number problem. one. Uh, I get a lot of those. Uh, number two, I'm so cheap that I will not give up on a three and a half dollar. It's a top flight, bro. Just let it go. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> hey, I 
Costco. We call those mother in laws. <laughs> no, but I, I did. And my buddy was yelling at me, go, what are you doing? And sure as shit, I am really susceptible to voice IP. Yeah. And it's it it takes you like twenty well for me it takes me a month to get out of my system. And then your like legs are your legs are all cut up. Oh and your yeah. Like Thank God this is a podcast yeah. and not a video. Yeah, because I'm ripped. No, uh oh. no, I think I think we're excited for everything that happens. You know, I think things naturally just fall not necessarily fall in our lap but i mean i think the more people you talk to the more interesting conversations you have whether it be at nary or anything else i think things happen but that's where vivia happened too and that's where that's why we have a dumpster company is because yeah we were, how'd you find this idea let's we go were, we were building a store um for sport clips i don't know probably three and a half four years ago five years ago don't remember um but we signed lois where our lease is ready to go like you know, sometimes you get that little grace period and the grace period's over and our store is not built yet, not open yet. And so we're calling yeah. our contractor and we're like, what's going on, man? Like, why isn't this thing done? We're ready to go. We have a team. We have a staff. Like, let's go. He's like, I can't find a dumpster. Mm. So the next week. That's the, that's the Rickster. That's the Rickster. Rick, yeah, we love Rick. He's, but he's the next week, guy. Mark starts getting into his hyper focused mode and <laughs> we got we a dumpster company boys we went to a that's what i heard <laughs> <laughs> we went to a franchise show that like you're looking for a dumpster yeah. i'm looking for a dumpster company yeah, yeah, we're, like, gonna get, we're gonna get really a checker and I'm literally we yes had, we had yeah. dialed in about five concepts that we really liked the model we liked the brand and uh we walked into this first show and the first first booth was Vivia. And we're like, this is, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. There's it's all kinds of be. different, there's Ace Hardware. There's all kinds of different concepts out there. The first one at yeah. the dumpster and company. I, we're like, I, we're in trouble. Yeah, we're and, in I, trouble. and I had a buddy of mine that uh, is a contractor in Nashville. And uh, he had given me the owner of the company's phone number uh, probably a year before. And so the same thing. It's like, yeah, we walk in. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm completely aware of this company. Like we're going to, we're just going to move forward on it. Like let us, where are we going to sign? Dude, and that, that, uh, that is such a power pull right yeah. there. Hey, uh, we need a dumpster. All right. I'm going to go buy a dumpster company. What do we, no, no, I just need a dumpster. Yeah. Uh, well, whatever. No, we're going we, another, we, we, need to, well, we need to fix this problem. Uh, I, we need to fix this I, problem. I will also right say, and, and he had went to the first meeting, but the contractor was, supposed to be part of this plan uh you know we you know our plan was continue to do haircuts but um as still one of our best friends today uh works his tail off and and he was just like man i know i led you to this idea he's like i'm too busy i can't <laughs> oh was no like, i can't do it we're like well well we I don't know anything about this man. business so i, I guess we're risk, gonna do it i think the risk there was too as well i mean it's it's hard to to really jump in with everything you got and say like all right I'm going to do this but you know we we did it we're happy about it we're excited about it um, all right so so you've launched though here oh, launched. oh hell yeah they've rolling. they've been rolling for yeah, over a year uh, two we're coming on two and a half years but yeah we wanted a, our first goal was to have a hundred containers um, on job sites in a year we met that in almost nine months. And then now we're shooting for that next hundred. And it sounds like your marketing is just super grassroots. So it's, it's, uh, you're looking at it right now. Yeah. Uh, you won't, um, you, the way they're marketing their business, very interesting. Again, um, they are really not doing uh, B2C. They're doing B2B, right? Mm -hmm. So you won't see them in all the B2C market I'm doing here in Atlanta. Right. Um, they're, they're coming through the groups like Nary. But here's the thing that they're doing in Nary, uh, in our group, they're pouring in to get out. And again, back to all these networking groups, we've talked about this. This is how Alan and I met. You want to get something out, you got to put something in. You put something in and guess what? It might not just be dollars coming out, but it might be relationships. It might be how to run my business better. And then, oh, by the way, it might be the fact that a company that does over $2,300 uh, 2, jobs a year might use you on their dumpsters when they only need them yeah, maybe a tenth of the time. It's such a tricky thing to tr teach somebody how to do when it comes to networking because they're like, okay, I got to put in so I get out. 
and all they're still focused on is getting out. How much do I have to put in to get out? But to really get, you got to selflessly give. Well, I and, I, and I think that's the hardest thing about networking is like, that's a big word. I hate the marketing word. I hate networking. I hate all like these big words that really mean so many more things, but you know, I think we've learned it through the model that, you know, we we've, we've been taught, but I don't think if it's your business, I don't think you, you can be afraid for that. No, I don't think like when you go into the networking business, if you don't say hi, if you don't say this is who I am, then you're going to go home. You know? And that's the hard part, especially uh, so what he's talking about is uh, Alan is a self-identified introvert. Uh, he, uh, you wouldn't know it because he's on this podcast. I'm a uh, gregarious introvert. He is. Uh, <laughs> but but he'll say, hey, look, I left to my own devices. I'd rather be sitting at home and left to my own and yeah. I'll do my own thing. I don't want to talk to you. I'll just, Chris, I'll just, I'll just text or email somebody. If I, if I, if I, if I can't talk to somebody like in COVID, I was going nuts. I, I mean, literally I, I was the guy who was on zoom that. because it went, I, I was going crazy. I miss COVID. I know. You I'm do. sorry. <laughs> I, I don't, I, I was like, Oh my God, this sucks. And so um, they said we could do cohorts here in Georgia. So my buddies and I, all we did was travel around, play golf, and go travel. We didn't even know COVID existed, but that's all. yeah. Tra- uh, but being see, in the South wasn't a bad thing during COVID. No, it was, <laughs> no, it was a great thing. Yeah, yeah. Especially um, all my family up in Michigan. Yeah. yeah. That's you, buddy, Brent, my brother, who I'd never go into business with. Well, I'm kidding. Um, but no, he's doing way better than me. All right. We got to wrap this up. You guys, man, it's been an awesome episode. If you guys haven't figured out, man, we got like mind melts going on with these two. Uh, you got to go see the YouTube video. We're going to put it out there. Um, I, I told Alan, <laughs> I was like, I said, I thought, I, I swear to God, I, originally when I met them, I thought they were twins. And they're like, no. And I mean, there's a family resemblance, but come on, Chris. They're two completely different brothers, people. So I, I'll give that, Bra- to, uh, I'll Bra- give that Bra- to everybody. That Brains and brothers. bronze, right? That's what they say. <laughs> You're right. you, you guys figure out. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> one, one is the eye candy. Yeah, so cool. Chris, I got to ask you, Chris. So the whole outing me as an introvert, was there a point to that? There was. <laughs> so, uh, but I can't remember. But, I don't either. <laughs> But it was the fact that, well, he said, you know, getting out there and networking, even if you don't want to, Michael said that, but Michael's clearly extroverted and loves talking to people, but maybe he, maybe he identifies as an introvert. That's why I was going to ask. I think I do. I mean, in, you'd rather uh, not talk to people and sit there and cook. No, I mean, I, I think I've learned that. I think I've learned that, but I mean, our mom will tell us, tell everybody till they're blue in the face, the story of when we are like, when you guys were kids and you had to sell the candies for the baseball team and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, I sent Mark to the door. I, I waited on the sidewalk. So you were the introvert. I was the introvert. That, that was my that's I was I an introvert. So I would say today, if you ask me, you I would say Chris. you're hey, or taking Miss Gibson her first grade uh Christmas present for yeah. you. And my my <laughs> Mark is Mark is in kindergarten. I'm in first grade. Oh my Mark, god. Mark yeah. had to give her the apple or whatever <laughs> I gave her. <laughs> And I, I remember like, selling those candy bars. But I hear I these stories wait. now. I don't remember that, but I'm like, what happened? I, re- like, I remember that. What so happened? Here was the difference between us. And so I started the uh, the trusted toolbox. I had never done a B2C business in my life. I had always either worked. I worked as a machinist. I worked as a manufacturing engineer. I worked as a consultant in banking. Uh, and then I eventually worked at a bank. I had never worked for the general public. But my mother used to say, when it came to selling those candy bars, she was like, you're the first one out there. And I used to tell you, no, 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 Christopher, you have to come home. You're, 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 no, you're done. You're done here. You're too far. <laughs> and I would keep going. I'm like, mom, we got to keep going. Mom, I'm hot. I'm hot. I need to, <laughs> give me another box. I'm give me another box. box. Like right now. <laughs> no, he was the best. He was the best. And yeah, so, it, it continued obviously, but yeah, Mark, I learned, awesome. I learned the big bro learned from little bro a little bit. That's nice. Yeah. Honestly, this is a great family story. I want to play golf with these guys. Let's go. All right. You know what? This is a good force. Alan, only we finally, have, like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, nearby. Finally, Alan, you know what? There's you're going to get your invite. In, there's a lot of golf in Georgia. That's right. As a matter of fact, there's some just on the other side I of those trees right there. The yeah. Yeah. Green of number six. We just bring our sticks just in case we yeah. have All right. a chance to play. You know what? We might have to do the podcast from the golf course. Ooh, we could do a live remote, talk a little bit. We could do that. A couple we'll shots. be like Bryson DeChambeau. I bet you have a nice patio over there looking over at number 18. I uh, We'll find a patio. Big Daddy will set you up. Yeah. In fact, we may find that right after this podcast, my friends. We might have to drive up there because these guys have nowhere to go. Let's yeah, do that. 
You know what? We could ask the four questions or we can get the hell out of here. We can hey, everybody, yeah, let's go. you listen to something. You figure something out. You might, you might not have a brother that's as cool as your brother or these guys' brothers. But you know what you can do? You can go out there and make stuff happen like these guys did because they figured it out. You got to make it happen. Sometimes you got to make chili. Sometimes you got to make cupcakes at 5 a.m. in the Sometimes morning. Sometimes you got to listen to the freaking carousel go around and around every two and a half minutes. With the worst smelling mall smell ever, it's a bad which mall. will it's completely a, depress a... you, which it did to me. But you know what you do? You get up the next day and you go, I can do this. Get out of here. Get it going. Let's go up that mountain. Let's get to success. Cheers, everybody. Thanks, guys. Cheers. We're out of here.